Hey, my name is Tom and welcome back to a Christmassy low carbon lifestyle. Me, my wife and a couple of friends for some of the time as well have been living with a heat pump for the last 18 months. And we're now into the second winter season and we're still warm, comfortable and happy living with a heat pump. Over the last 18 months, we've learned a lot about how to get the best out of the efficiency of the system. Some tinkering, some watching other videos on YouTube, some reading on the internet. And I'm pleased to say that we've increased the efficiency of our heat pump so far this autumn and the beginning of winter by over 15%. So what have we done and how have we done that? My name is Tom and this is a little series about a low carbon lifestyle. Alongside most of us this autumn, I tried hard to reduce the amount of energy that we used at home. Partly because of large costs associated with the price cap, partly to reduce our own emissions, but also in solidarity with the people of Ukraine. Ultimately, the less gas that we use in the UK and the less energy we use in the UK are the less funds that Putin had for violence. So alongside trying to be efficient with the use of electricity around the house, we worked hard to improve the efficiency of our heat pump. So what have we achieved? Compared to last year, we used 13% less electricity in October and 23% less in November, 200 kilowatt hours less over those two months. Our efforts and our attempts at energy efficiency have paid off. And in fact, the last six months compared to the first six months that we had the heat pump, we had a little bit more heat in our house for quite a lot less electricity. Last year, our efficiency over that six month period was 298%. And over the last six months, it has been 350%, which means our heat pump during that time was 20% cheaper to run than our old gas boiler. So what have we done to it? Well, we've done three things since the summer that I think have had an impact. One of them's a tweak within the installer settings on the heat pump controller. And these are the, the protected settings that you aren't really supposed to tinker with too much. But I would argue that are really useful if you want to improve efficiency of your system. So the first two things that have had a good impact, here we go. Over the last year, I spent a lot of time playing with the weather compensation curve or the heat curve within those installer settings. I'm not sure what it was set to when it was commissioned, but I was playing with it almost constantly. How do I get that little bit more heat on the coldest days? How come my heat pump isn't as efficient as others with a similar system or as efficient as the manufacturer's literature said it would be? I was tinkering with the heat curve, putting it up, tinkering with it, putting it down. Maybe an example would be that the house wouldn't get up to temperature for hours in the morning. So I'd move the heat curve up and in doing so I'd reduce the efficiency. And why did it take so long to get to temperature? Well, we had the setback temperature overnight at 15 degrees, but we wanted it to be 19 degrees at 7 a.m. And with such a low setback, we basically turned the heating off all night. We would then need really high flow temperatures to get anywhere near that 19 degrees from when we woke up. So I was pushing the heat curve up to 1.1 or 1.2, really trying to squeeze a little bit more out of our system, trying to get that temperature up more quickly and hurting the efficiency in the process. But the more that you get into the detail of the theory of running a heat pump, you realize that they aren't designed for these really big swings in temperature. Heat pumps work best when they're providing just enough heat to keep the temperature steady or to move the temperature only slightly um, over a number of hours. So, the first two things that we changed, the first two seconds we changed, we changed simultaneously. We raised the setback temperature slightly to within two degrees of our of our of the temperature we wanted in the morning. So in our case, we raised it to 17 degrees and we moved the heat curve down. And this means that the heat pump will be working a bit overnight to keep the house at 17 degrees on the coldest day, but not have to work as hard in the morning to get to where we want it to be. Moving that heat curve down a little bit meant that we were calling for less heat in the radiators at the same external temperature. And because the efficiency of a heat pump goes up and up, the less work that the compressor inside the unit needs to do, which actually means the smaller the difference between the external temperature and the temperature of the water in the radiators, 
Lowering the flow temperature means that the, the heat pump works more efficiently. So how low did we go? Well, at times in the autumn, when we didn't need loads of feet, I had the heat curve as low as 0.3. And this is really quite low, and it means that at 10 degrees outside, maybe a classic autumnal temperature, we'd see something like 25 degrees in our radiators. At 0.3, with 0 degrees outside, we'd actually only get nearly 30 degrees. A heat curve this low, it worked fine when we didn't need loads of heat, like in October, where it would just trickle heat throughout the day and make sure that we were comfortable with that small, small addition. But as the temperatures dropped, the curve was obviously way too low. At the lower temperatures, the heat pump wasn't giving us anywhere near enough heat. So we pushed it up a little, but we didn't push it up to anywhere near as that 1.1 or 1.2 that I started with. We're now at 0.7, which is probably still quite low in a Victorian terrace, but it seems to work just fine for us. Okay, they're the first two, setback temperature and heat curve. The third change is on the hot water settings. How warm does hot water need to be? And I think this is different, uh, a different preference for different people. For me, I'm happy showering at a water temperature in the mid to high 30s, so maybe 36, 37. So we don't really need hot water to be that high for showers. But for washing up or for people who may like hotter showers or really want a hot bath every now and then, we might be able to boost the water up for those times. But boosting up water with a heat pump can take a while and it can take a bit of planning. So we've settled for 48 degrees when there's more than one person at home and 42 degrees when it's just me at home. My wife does work away every now and then. But that's about it. Those three things, those are the major things that we've changed that I think has contributed to improving our efficiency and reducing the amount of electricity we've used. But, and it is a big but, there's actually been something else going on over the last few months, and you've probably noticed it. You've probably noticed it being a little bit warmer this autumn. And it's only the last week or so that the cold weather has really hit, and it's hit with, with a vengeance. So doesn't the mild autumn explain the increase in efficiency? Well, maybe it does. It can be tricky to compare weather year on year. The air temperature, the strength of wind, the humidity, all those things all contribute to how much a heat pump so how much heat we might need in a house. One of the ways that we can compare is using a tool called degree days. So degree days are a total of the number of, deg of degrees below a set temperature. So that if that set temperature was the temperature that we're likely to need heating internally, it's that number multiplied by the number of days below that temperature. And with degree days, we can compare each day, week, month, or year to understand how much heating was needed. So I think this autumn was milder this year than last year, but how much milder was it? Well, at our closest weather station, there were 14% fewer degree days in October, uh, in October 2022 versus 21, and 7.5% fewer in November. So if your bills were 14% less this October and 7.5% less in November, that could be why. So what does this mean for our energy efficiency efforts? If we needed 14% less heat, have we actually had any impact? Well, the key figure is the heat per degree day, kilowatt hours per degree day. In October, we actually used more electricity this year per, per degree day than last year, 1% more. Maybe we didn't improve at all, but we used substantially less in November, 17% less. So maybe we did. I do have a little bit of an explanation for both of those results. October 2021 was actually the first month or so that we were having any heating in the house. And we'd noticed that there was a, an issue with a valve in our radiator circuit that meant that we were actually only heating part of the house and we'd not picked it up before. The rest of the house was actually pretty cold, but it meant that we didn't use much electricity that month. We just huddled, we all huddled together in one room. But this year, the house was warmer, but we also used more energy. By November last year, the system was working well. So we used more energy heating the whole house, just like we did in November this year. But due to the changes that we made in how we run the heat pump, we managed to increase the efficiency by almost 18% this year compared to last year. And there, more or less, is the saving we saw when considering kilowatt hours per degree day 
in 2021 versus 2022. So we're using degree days as a tool, we can confidently say that we've increased the efficiency of our system by lowering the heat curve. So we need a lower flow temperature in our radiators while still being comfortable in the house. So what do you reckon? Are there any other tweaks that I should think about to my uh, heating system? Do comment below. And if you wanted to get your head around degree days, I recorded this short explainer all about them over here.